This is a mystery even Sherlock Holmes wouldn't be able to solve. Imagine coming home one day to your partner. You put the key in the door and say something along the lines of, hey honey, I'm home. There's no reply. You go to the kitchen and she's not there. So you enter the living room only to be met by the most gruesome thing you've ever seen or will see. Your nearest and dearest is a pile of smoldering ashes on the floor. Well, there's a foot, still wearing the Nike shoes that she just bought. Besides the immediate area under her, the rest of the room is fine. It's as if she just went up in flames, combusted all by herself. You as well as the investigators that later arrive have no idea how this happened. A week later, the newspapers state, cause of death unknown. That might sound like something from a tale of the Twilight Zone, but it has happened before, many times in fact. The term for it is spontaneous human combustion, which just means someone seemingly going up in flames, possibly without external factors being to blame. You've likely seen such a thing in horror movies, but it's not something we expect to see in real life. First, we'll present to you a case of this happening and then we'll try and find out why it happens. The year is 1951 and it was a steamy hot summertime in Florida, USA. The landlady of a woman named Mary Hardy Reeser had a telegram for her renter and so she went around to the house. Only she put her hand on the doorknob and it felt kinda hot. That worried her and so she called the cops. The police opened the door and had the shock of their lives because when they entered the living room what they witnessed was pretty much a bunch of smoldering ashes in a burnt out chair. The only part of the woman not incinerated was the bottom part of her leg. One black shoe was still on her foot. We've seen the photo and you can only imagine how this perplexed the cops. No one had broken into the house and the fire had completely destroyed the woman from what seemed like within. It was like she had just gone up in flames and not even moved from the chair. In that chair lay some backbone and a shrunken skull along with other bits of bone fragments. The news reports actually said her skull was shrunk to the size of a cup. Police, the fire department and pathologists were baffled. Had she caught fire, she would have moved or called for help. How could a body just burn like that? It seemed to some people as if she had burned from the inside and that she must have gone up in a very intense blaze. It would have taken extremely high temperatures to cremate a person on the spot. The US media was in a frenzy about this with one outlet calling it the case of the cinder woman mystery and a mystery it was. Perhaps the media said the loving mother had been somehow hit by a freak lightning strike. Someone wrote into one newspaper saying, a ball of fire came through the open window and it hit her. I've seen it happen. No one was sure though. Although some outlets started to peddle the theory of internal human combustion, it wasn't a new thing. There were reported cases of it happening for centuries. The investigation found no traces of accelerants such as gasoline or other combustible fluids. It really seemed like she had gone up in flames. One of the investigators said it was the most unusual case I'd seen during my almost 25 years of police work. That same investigator then turned to anyone who might have knowledge of this, issuing a note that read, We request any information or theories that could explain how a human body could be so destroyed and the fire confined to such a small area, and so little damage done to the structure of the building and the furniture in the room, not even scorched or damaged by smoke. And so came back a theory, although one that a lot of people didn't really accept. The theory was called the wick effect. To explain this, you need to know some things about our dearly departed Mary. 1. She took sleeping pills and 2. She was said to be a very enthusiastic smoker of cigarettes. She was also on the larger side and let's just say she was flabby. Hey, she was 67 and lived alone. She liked to eat. So the theory goes that she might have taken some of those pills and then fallen into a deep sleep. As she hardly ever had a cigarette out of her hand, her daughter would later confirm this, she might have fallen asleep with that smoke still going. She was wearing a nightgown made of rayon acetate which could have easily gone up in flames. So, said the theorists, her smoke caused the gown to catch fire and then as she couldn't wake up she slowly burned until she melted much like a candle left to burn. Beside the chair there was nowhere for the fire to go so it just consumed her. As she had so much fat on her that could have helped the smoldering process as fat burns. Does that explain things for you? Likely not and it didn't impress a lot of scientists either. One skeptical scientist said the obvious thing in that for such a cremation to happen she would have had to burn at several thousand degrees for several hours. He added, I cannot conceive of such a complete cremation without more burning in the apartment. He also asked about a shrunken skull. In a normal fire, it would have exploded. He wrote, in presence of heat sufficient to destroy soft tissues, the skull would literally explode into many pieces. I've never known any exception to this rule. 
That, along with the case in general, has remained a mystery. If you were indeed Sherlock Holmes, you might come up with another theory which is perhaps darker but less mysterious. Maybe she was killed by a murderer with some kind of crematorium device. He then decided to not finish the foot, bring back the body to his house, then burn the chair to make it look like the event had happened in the room. Oh, and of course, not a person saw this. Yep, that doesn't sound too plausible either. Like we said, this case, it seems, is immutably unsolved. As you'll see, there are many such unsolved cases like this one. You won't be surprised to hear that a lot of people think something out of this world made it happen. It does sound like the work of a demon, and hey, if you've seen the horror movie Hereditary, you'll know that demons allegedly get up to such things. You might call this an outlier in terms of theories. It seems that from the first reported case in the 18th century to the present date, there have been 200 cases that looked like internal human combustion. Most experts have no explanation for this in the scientific sense, so they say it doesn't exist, meaning that there has to be external factors at work. At the same time, people have seemingly burned from within, and there has been no easy explanation. People haven't stopped trying to explain though, and for quite some time. Back in the 19th century, some scientists thought it might have had something to do with alcoholism, but they didn't say exactly how booze could create the mortal bonfire. It just seemed that a lot of these incinerated folks were partial to a drink or 10. It was a recurring theme, at least. In the British Medical Journal in 1938, one man wrote that alcoholism seemed to be a factor in most cases. He also said that when it occurred, it usually happened to older women. In more recent investigations, it was written that in most cases, the people were, like Mary, likely close to a fire source, whether that was a cigarette or a lamp or a candle or an open flame. To add to that, booze, or in Mary's case, the sleeping pills. They catch fire but are too zonked or drunk to wake up, and then it's possible the material around them caused a bigger fire. In turn, their body fat seeped into the material and caused the fire to burn at a higher temperature. And that, say some people, is how they melt on the spot. The only things spared are the extremities, such as that shoe. We've seen a few pictures where almost entire legs survived, but nothing else. The photos show just ash and legs. There are also more recent cases. There's this story, reported by the independent newspaper in the UK in 2017. Here's the first line of the story. A pensioner has died of his injuries after bursting into flames in unexplained circumstances in a London street. We looked into this, and while weird to say the least, it seems investigators think he somehow managed to set himself on fire. Okay, that's plausible, we guess. But what about Michael Faraday, a man who died not long ago in Ireland aged 76, whose death was called by the pathologist a result of internal human combustion? Police said no foul play and no accelerants were to blame. He had burned to ashes, just like Mary. The medical examiner concluded this fire was thoroughly investigated and I'm left with the conclusion that this fits into the category of spontaneous human combustion, for which there's no adequate explanation. Skeptics in this case, as in others, said the same thing that there must have been an ignition and a sleeping person and then an almighty conflagration. They also asked the same question as they've asked for years, which is, why does internal human combustion not happen more often if it exists? And we found more cases, but we won't describe them all as they all sound alike. That is, they involved an elderly person burned to ashes with some extremities left. In some cases, there was a possibility of a flame being nearby, but it's unlikely in a few cases that this was to blame. The cause of death was often stated as unknown. We should say that we found one case of this happening to someone who was just 42. People dying like this confounds us all, and even the medical experts aren't ready to place their bets on one possibility alone. It really is a mystery in most cases, and it's been going on for a while. You'll find the novelist Charles Dickens and Herman Melville all the way back talking about this mystery. And while many people will invoke the paranormal, the closest thing science has come up with is the Wick Effect. There is one recent alternative theory though, and this was posited by a British biologist named Brian J. Ford. In 2012, he tried to answer the question in The New Scientists of why humans spontaneously combust. He doesn't believe in the wick effect or anything close to the paranormal. He doesn't buy any of the theories put forward so far. He believes that the phenomenon could be down to diet and something called acetones being produced by the body. This might happen as a result of a certain diet, diabetes, and or boozing. This is what he wrote about these things in a long paper on the subject of going up in flames. Acetone is familiar as nail polish remover, and it may seem to be an unusual compound to find in metabolic cycles, but it is always present in the body in small amounts, and it can be used as an energy source by living cells. It is highly flammable, he said, and is present on the breath. He added that it also collects in layers of fat and on clothes. He said, even static electricity produced by combing your hair or removing certain clothes might ignite the stuff, not to mention lighting a cigarette, and voila, 
the conflagration commences. He actually put this to the test in a lab and concluded, for the very first time we have plausible models for spontaneous human combustion, which offers a natural metabolic explanation for this well documented phenomenon. Are you convinced by any of these theories or do you have your own? Tell us in the comments. Now go watch our episode on the weirdest brain disorders. Thanks for watching and as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.